Welcome football stalkers, it's your boy the master tactician, we're doing a special edition of dissecting Mamilodi Sundown's tactical approach to their games, how their wingers work, how their defenders work, how their middle field works and which better place than to do it at the iconic Loftus Fastfeld Stadium where you had the most memorable games where Sundowns against Kaiser Chiefs 2-1 the final score 44 passes that were being uh, put together by Mamelodi Sundowns without an interception by any Kaiser Chiefs player another iconic game was the 4-1 win against Kaiser Chiefs in an NTN 8 uh, guys this stadium served some good memories of football and I mean rugby this was one of the Soccer World Cup stadiums and unfortunately uh, which the game that I would like to forget the Bafana Bafana game but let me not digress um, let's get into this thing of dissecting how Pito likes his Sundowns to play so what's very interesting about the wingers that uh, Sundowns are using because the way Sundowns likes playing on attack uh, they basically like using their wing backs to press high, to overlap so that they can put in the crosses, supporting by the natural wingers to have your interplays and stuff. Now, on the left-hand side, mostly, which obviously uh, Pito Musimandi's uh, preferred left back is Langaman. And what he likes doing, he likes running to, to overlap. And what you have in the middle there is Hompo Kekana, who obviously is right-footed. Only He always picks up Langaman's run, so he plays the diagonal ball where Langaman would pick it up, basically running and putting the crosses. Now, there's been other instances where if Langaman has support, where one of the wingers, whether it's Zwane, whether it's Morena, he's also going to tuck in, pass the ball in, and then also try and have a movement where he goes back, basically trying to, to drag in the defender to come inside, giving more space on the wing, and then he goes back, Zwana would lay it off, or Morena would lay it off, and then he puts in the crosses. That's generally how Sanons would play normally on the left. Whereas on the right, uh, which in this case, if, if Pito is using Morena as a right back rather than Nonga, what you'd find is Morena would trust more his pace and what he would do is on his own without any support from the wingers he would try and basically play the ball into space and try and overlap by beating the defenders but instead of uh, like Langaman would do in, in crossing the balls Morena would rather come inside and try and play the killer pass instead of putting the crosses in but he does at times put the, the, the crosses in but he also likes enjoying playing the one two touches, playing the triangle passes where he comes inside, where they confuse the defenders and what you normally find is when he does what he does, defenders would normally push inside to try and stop him from putting in the cross and what they're actually doing is giving more space for him to cut back the ball where you most likely would find a finisher who's just basically going to place the ball in the back of the net so in the center of the stadium which obviously is the middle field uh, where you are most likely to find a combination of Kekana and Jali for this upcoming game but you had before you had Kekana and Mudise uh, who was uh, um, um, uh, Pito's uh, preferred combination in middle field and then obviously with the introduction of Bongani Zungu where Zungu was the one who was protecting and releasing more Kekana into an advanced role and then basically having their interchanges but I'll concentrate on Jali and Kekana. Now, Kekana's um, basically, I spoke about him playing the diagonal balls. Now, with his right hand, with his right foot, he likes playing the diagonal ball to Langaman. And I think Pizzo has been looking for a middle field who's going to be able to play the diagonal ball with a left to the right for the like of Morena or Nonga to have their overlap. Now, what you're mostly going to find with Kekana, Kekana he's going to be trying to press the ball he's going to be trying to press the middle field if the ball is going to be in this area you're going to find him running at the ball a lot obviously with the support of the Serenos, uh, the Zwanis, the Morenas whoever's going to be an attack and uh, Charlie is going to be more of the one who's going to be at least trying to protect the center backs from the attack that's going to be coming uh, what's very interesting is I've seen Jali as well trying to also play the ball on the right as well. He's trying to do that. But what's very interesting is that 
Kekana with his age, they prefer him to be more attacking because if he becomes defensive, he covers more ground. And I don't think Coach Piso would want that because then he's most likely going to expose the defense of Sundowns. So you would like him to be the one on attack. Sundowns is more deadly when they're on the front foot rather than when, they, when they're defending. Now, what I've noticed about Sundowns' defense... Now, obviously, the play is mostly about the wing backs pressing high and overlapping. Now, when it comes to defense, and the defense shape that Sundowns has is what you would find is as soon as an opposition winger has the ball, whether it's a winger or a, a, a wing back, what you would find is uh, on this side, which is going to be Langerman, Langerman is going to be trying to press the winger to make him rather play the ball uh, play the ball back or try and make a pass somewhere else and when he goes in what you're going to find from this side which is going to be Lebosa Lebosa is going to try and close the space that Langerman was occupying making it compact now Sundowns in attack and in defense, they always have a compact block. Now, when they're attacking, they're attacking numbers, making it also difficult for the opposition to defend against them because they have numbers. They have, they play their triangle passes. Now, when they lose the ball, they try and press the ball to get the ball back in your own, in the opposition's half. When that doesn't happen, when they come back to defend, they also leave a compact line. Now, you'll probably find from the defense line to the middle field, which in most cases, when they defend, they have a formation of 4-4-2. Now, between the 4-4s, you'll find that there's, the, there's a, a gap of about 5 meters. They're trying to keep it compact. They're trying to not leave too much space for the opposition. Now, when the winger goes outside, Mlebusa would come in and close the gap where Langerman was, was occupying. Same goes for Morena or Nganga, who if they go and press the ball, you'd find whether it's Arente or it's Madisha, they're also going to try and close the gap where the, the space, uh, where uh, Morena or Nganga was occupying the space. And then you'd then find a middle field, in this case, Charlie or Kekana, trying to also cover in and uh, basically creating more compact. Other situations, what you would find is the whole team would all move in a direct in one direction if the ball is on this side you would see that the whole team in a compact block are going to move this side if the ball goes that side you would see that the whole team would try and move as a whole uh, team going this side creating that compactness making it difficult for the opposition to play their passes or to basically create any real opportunities that's basically how Sundowns would would try and and defend uh, and it's, it's it's very I think it's a modern way of playing football these days by having your compact block defensively and in attack making it difficult for whoever you're playing against whether you're defending or attacking for the past three seasons Sundowns were not playing with a natural striker a natural number nine now they had Pesitao they have Mabua only recently they bought a natural striker in the like of Afonso they had Brokey but Brokey didn't suit the style of play that Sanons likes to play in terms of playing the interpasses where Brokey was more of a player that wants to hold the ball, release it and run into space. What's interesting about the way Sanons plays is that any player is an attacking player. Do they really need a striker? Not really, but Sanons would be a far better team with a striker. We've seen that with them having Castro. They were a better team, they scored more goals. It was a, rec a record-breaking season. With now Afonso, while well, Sanos can only hope that that's going to be the case. Now you can stretch back to the likes of Daniel Mambush Mudawi, Rafael Chuku. So surely the Shushan and Piano can play with a natural striker. The question is, which striker can fit in into the system and be prolific? So, this is where it's going to start. Players high-fiving each other. Getting ready mentally, getting the confidence, the coach hyping them up, getting them ready. Guys think, play the game, being angry, be aggressive. This is where it's all going to start. It's going to start in here. Then it's going to go out there for us, the fans, to enjoy the spectacle. 
the players are going to be in here. The tactics are going to be spoken about in this room. Guys, we need to feel it. You need to sense it. Temba, Morena, Serino. Are you guys okay? Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready to fight? Guys, let's enjoy this. In closing, basically when it comes to tactics, tactics are influenced by the quality of the players, uh, the opposition, as to what form of play would basically uh, a team would capitalize in winning the game. Now, I would go a bit in looking at the combination that Coach Pito had. Uh, you had the famous CBD, where if you look at the qualities where obviously you have a left-footed Keegan Dolly, who's pacey, uh, who's good on the ball, and then you have Kama Billard, who his ball control is excellent, who's a finisher, and who's able to basically um, uh, run with the ball and around defenders, those, or basically just go through defenders. And then you have uh, Leonardo Castro, who was a very good finisher, who also had a very good touch to basically complement to, to complement the combination between the three of them. And what you had with the three of them is the movement they had. It, the movement was mostly between Keegan Dolly and Kamabilia, where they did the most running and passing and stuff. Whereas you had Castro, who was basically occupying the space where he was pulling in defenders, giving more space to Keegan Dolly and Kamabilia, and in certain instances for him dropping deeper, basically leaving Kamabila and Dolly to go on the flanks and basically cut in and give him the balls. Now you have that combination. Now you go now to Pito has been looking for that combination since uh, Keegan went overseas and, and Kamabila who went to uh, Kaiser Chiefs. We had Pesitao, who Pesitao, because of his pace and his trickery and who's also good on the ball, what he then did is he exposed the defense by basically running behind defenders, basically being playing off defenders. Uh, and the ball was being played into space, mostly by Kakana, where he runs with the ball and he comes in, he's able to beat defenders, pass the ball or even finish himself. Now, he had a very good partnership with Temba Zwani, where him and Temba Zwani, they're passing between the two of them. At times, it was complemented by Spususo Vilagazi coming in as well to join the party. Or in instances where Kakana is also part of it, or you had Anthony Lafour. But I think the key combination was between Zwane and, and Pesitao. Coming to now, where you have Serino, who seems to be the glue, if he's playing Sanon's place where he's feeding the likes of Temba Zwani, he's feeding the likes of Morena, he's feeding whoever's going to be the striker, whether it's Mabua, whether it's going to be Alimeza, whether it's going to be uh, Pagamani Mashambi, but he's the playmaker, so he's the glue in this team. When he plays well, the Zwanis and the Morenas, they also come to the party and play well. And what I also noticed about Sirino is that he has a, a relationship with uh, Andy Lejali. I think it's mostly because he likes playing on the left a lot. He likes going into the left, where he has a signature, where he cuts inside when he's in the 18 area to score. That's basically the combination that are influenced by the quality of the players. But in essence, what you find from Coach Pito is that what he likes doing is he likes to use the wingers and the fullbacks to play along each other on the wings into space feeding the balls inside the 18 area or cutting it back to other players who are going to basically come in, the Serenios who are going to be the playmakers to make Sundowns tick. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the tactic that that's... Shout.